Hello friends, today I would like to walk you through some of my stocks that I purchased and I plan to increase my number of shares with and let's start with the Citigroup. So Citigroup is the bank and if you look at US banks by the asset size you will notice that they're number four with 1.6 trillion dollars in assets. So that basically gives us an understanding that this is very large institution with a lot of money so it shouldn't be volatile and as you understand it's a bank right so as warren buffett tells if bank is not doing something stupid like credit suisse this is a really good business to invest into i have four shares in citigroup and the main reason why i invest into it is of course dividend yield so now i get 4.6 percent yield on the cost if you'd like to purchase this stock today, you will have 4.5% dividend yield, which is still great, which is still beats the 4% yield on the bonds that some people prefer. But let's take a closer look. How do I select this stock? So first of all, why am I investing into uh, these companies? Because it's a bank, you know, I think that they will thrive through any economic uncertainty. This is not a tax stock that is going to fall or increase and you can't even understand why this is happening or you know any of those reasons so this is a day-to-day -day enterprise that everybody interacts with okay people will have cards to my knowledge like in the near five to ten years they will still have the card they will still use some banks and whatever or you know whatever they do or whenever they uh, change the location or change their jobs they still use banks and usually they don't change banks from time to time especially if you have mortgage or loans or you know this is why you understand why i selected this company uh, you can also watch my other video like six points that i consider relevant when buying this stock so all of them are met in here so i do like the company i do like what they do and i think they will exist in the 10 years perspective with even more price than they have now. One of the things that happened in the past was the management of Citigroup and Citibank had some issues, but since then they started to pay dividends and provide really consistent growth to the shareholders. And you can see it from this chart that overall the company is doing pretty well. And if we remove some uh, drops that happen from time to time, it looks pretty reasonable to me overall especially considering high dividend yield so one of the things that you can notice right from the start is this chart on finnovis which i really like use to use and you know i use it really regularly so profit margin is 23 percent, which is great if you compare it to some of the competitors like wells fargo you will see that they have 30 percent if you take a look at uh, jp morgan they have even more profit margin so it really gives us an understanding that this bank has more room for growth in terms of taking more from the clients or providing more services so this is why i really like this that they can grow but you know i don't see much of the options how wells fargo can take more percentage of margin uh, from their clients and the other thing that i also like is their sales so if you take a look at the income they are doing relevantly the same income that wells fargo is doing but at the same time the sales are 20 percent less for wells fargo so to my view there is the room for growth because at some point they can just start taking more revenue from their clients and at the same time make better results and without the need to increase the sales or do something about it but that's again just a rough estimation that we can see at this point the other parameter that i really like is p e so price to earnings is 6.1 so if you would ask is it high or low i would say that this is pretty low like really pretty low and the other like bad parameters that we also see here is forward price to earnings so for those of you who don't know how it's calculated let me just visualize it uh real quick so if we have hundred dollars if we have a share that costs hundred dollars and we make twenty dollars per one share it means that we have five price to earnings so let's say next year your price 
of stock is still $100. So you still have to pay $100 to buy one share of the company. But the company doubles its revenue per share. So let's say the next year, the company is going to increase the revenue twice to $40 per share, which means that price to earnings will be 2.5, which will be two times lower than what we had before. So if forward p e is smaller than the current price to earnings, it means that the company is going to drive more yield and earn more money. If we see something like here, we see, we uh, can notice that the company is going to earn less revenue. So the company is already planning to earn less revenue. And if we divide six by seven, so 15% decrease is going to happen in the cost of this company, or we could expect 15% cost decrease. And I think this is already included in the market estimation, to my view, they will still have the Q4 earnings call, but in January, but still you can understand that the drop is going to happen and the, it will be significant one. So I think that the market has already weighted it in. Um, the other parameters you can also explore here, but overall, I do like what I see here. Uh, I do like their income, their sales, their market capitalization. p and &E is fantastic. They're in S&P 500, which I usually don't like that much, but still, you know, everything is looking pretty good. You can also use the reference of any other bank or institution, see how they are going to perform. For example, for Wells Fargo, you can see that they're going to improve their price to earning ratio. But again, it's 10.7. So you already pay 40% bigger price for one share of Wells Fargo than you will pay for the Citigroup. And the other points that is really important to analyze is the uh, quantity of shares that the company is having. So as you see, the company issued almost 3 billion shares in 20, 20, 2010. So after the economic crisis, they needed the capital to run the business and to expand the operations. And as you can see, the quantity of those shares started to decrease in 2016, which I really like that the company is doing buybacks, that there are less shares in the market. And as you can see, slowly they are doing some buybacks, which is always great to know. And as again, Warren Buffett says, the great company is incentivizing the investors. And if there is a great management on board, I think we can be sure that this money will be saved. Again, not recommendation uh, or advice, but that's how I see the stock and where it's going to go. Then if we look at the uh, debt to equity ratio, you can see that the debt is pretty stable over the last years. Uh, and the ratio is like one point, like more than one. This is already not that great. But if we look at other banks like Wells Fargo, we can see that their debt to equity ratio is 0.8. 0.84. If we look at JP Morgan, this is close to one and decreasing. So overall, it doesn't look like there is any large problem. So uh, as we see in the past, it was even above 2.5 and now it's only 1.2. So and it never increased more like 10 percent, more than 10 percent year to year. So if we even project two years of really bad situation for the company and they increase their debt, it can still go higher than where it is now. So that's my understanding of the situation. So that is not that big of a problem for the company in the perspective of next couple of years. Uh, if we look at the ratings that, let's use Wall Street Journal for that. If we look at the ratings that this company is having, first of all, what I really like is the last quarter's performance where you can see that the company actually is in analyst range or exceeding the expectations of analysts. Uh, and as you can see, the results are looking pretty great for the last four quarters. I mean, look at it from this perspective. For the four, four consecutive quarters, the company is doing better than it is expected to perform. And again, we are talking about bank. We're not talking about tech stock. You know, it's not Tesla or any hype stock that people might be buying. Um, and the analyst ratings are either to hold or to buy. But definitely... There is not that many of them who are considering to do something else. And if we look over the time, we can see that some people actually shifted towards buying it versus just holding. 
And let's take a look at the stock price target, which is also a really great metric to analyze. So the current price is $45 per share. And the lowest price that is projected for the company is $42, which again is less than uh, 10% in the estimation. But the median is $52, so it's like 20% more than the current price. And it's considered to be the median or the average. And the high might be $95, which I really like because, again, we are now talking about the bank. Okay, because it's really easy to talk about Tesla. You know, it could cost thousand dollars tomorrow or fifty dollars. This all might happen, and nobody knows why. But for the bank, volatility is not something that is usual. Because again, banks are really slow, and they're having a lot of bureaucracy in their procedures. Any change is happening like for years, if not for quarters, like even short-term ones. So this is why it's really great to own the bank because you have plenty of time to react to any market change that is going to happen. But let's take a look at, let's deep dive into the Q3 results that we've had. Overall, things are looking pretty great, but there is one risk that I think is already weighted in the price that the bank is having. Because the price that we see now was relevant in 2013, which again, you cannot tell that, um, this company is overpriced and uh, considering the last you know, one or two years when the prices were really high. So one of the risks that this company is having is related to the other markets or third party markets, non-US ones. On one hand, I do like the exposure that company is having by, while it's presented in the EMEA, APAC and Latin America. So the more countries the company can uh, start operating in, the better. Because again, the most of the costs the company will still bear in its headquarters. And while expanding into other markets, the expenses are way lower than if you start a bank from scratch in those countries. So this is why I do like the fact that they can start operating in any other non-US area and start being successful there and grow their shareholders' equity by this. And the less markets they're presented in uh, might be even better because then they have more perspective. The other, the downside of this is actually the exit of the markets that the company is planning. So if you, again, take a look carefully, they were exiting Russia recently. They had a lot of equity there, loans and other operations and revenue, of course, which is no longer going to happen. And um, this is why I think, again, this risk is already included in the price that this company is operating at or is being sold at. At the same time, the company is also exiting the other markets. And as you can see, estimated um, time for them is shown on this chart. But overall, it shouldn't have much of an impact. Um, Again, my understanding is that the company is still having a lot of potential and is still going to grow massively, especially considering that we are not talking about the next one or two years perspective. If I look at this company from a more broader perspective, it was performing well in the other markets like Russia before. And I think that overall, when this war, this conflict that is ongoing now will, will end, the company will again return to those markets and like any other company like McDonald's, you know, Coca-Cola or Pepsi or any other, you know, that actually left the market, they will start being presented there. They will develop their business back and start getting more revenue um, into the investors' pockets, to my view. So if we look from the short term, what do we get in the lights of Citigroup? So a stable banking business, the business that, you know, will exist for like years and years after really low price to equity that this company is having like really low even if we weigh in like 20 percent loss from the other from exiting other third-party markets uh non-us markets we will still see that price to equity is really low so it's a really good investment at this moment to my view considering that the price will drop lower well, I don't think it might happen because, as you can see, the numbers there are already at the 2013 levels. So 2012, 
I don't believe it's going to happen. They have too much of an equity plus inflation. So, you know, large funds will start buying this stock like mad if that will even start to happen. So I don't expect it at all. Um, and at the same time, in the lights of like one, two, three years ahead, I think this company is going to grow massively by expanding into third party markets that they either left or uh, started basically to put on hold these businesses, they will develop it there. Plus, if the US currency that is now dominating in the world and all of the other currencies are devalued because of strong dollar. So once this is this era is going to end, so we will see the downward trend. So these all companies who are operating in other markets will start make way more money than they are now. And plus, in the lights of the recession that is upcoming, Citigroup is one of the most stable businesses you can invest into. Not only because of 4.5% dividends that you are going to be paid over this time, but also because people will still give their money to banks. They will still make the transactions and you don't care where are they actually working. Even if they are not working, but they still have an account where the government is paying them you still charge them something from these funds that they operate with. So I think that it's the best stock to own in the recession. But again, up to you, not an investment advice. Do whatever you consider relevant. And thank you. Hope this video was helpful to you.